In today's video, I'm going to cover the 15 things that every man should have in his truck, winter edition. First off, a good flashlight. My years with the fire department have taught me that the Streamlight Survivor is an excellent light. It's a real penetrating beam, so you can identify things at a long, long way off. It cuts through fog pretty good, and its 90 degree angle makes it very useful for hands free. If you need to put your tire chains on or work on something, you can clip it on and you can work hands free. You can sit it on the ground, it stands upright, and it has really good uh, battery setup here. It's got four, it takes four AA batteries that fit in this clamshell, and it lasts a long, long time. Make sure, because it doesn't have a safety switch, if you're gonna throw this in a box or underneath your, the back seat, make sure you flip the batteries around so it doesn't inadvertently come on and when you need it, it's out of power. But the Streamlight Survivor is a tough flashlight that you'll have the rest of your life, provided you don't lose it. Next off, I'm gonna have a, a good a battery charger or a jump pack. This here, the, this is the NOCO GB40, and I'll put links to all this stuff in the description if you want to look it up. The GB40, I've had really good luck with it. It even is able to jump start like big F350 diesel pickups. I've never had a problem with it. It'll start multiple times. It also has a, a built-in flashlight, so it gives you a little bit of a backup. And another handy thing is it gives you the ability to charge electronics on the back. It's got a USB port. Be sure that you include in this bag three charging cables. I'm gonna have all three to cover pretty much any phone, USB, USB-C, and Lightning for iPhone. Just coil those up, throw those in there, and you'll have that. You'll have the ability, if you need to, charge your phone up. You can get many charges out of this. This is a handy unit. It's not the only, my only option for charging batteries in this kit, but it's very compact and very useful. My concern with these things is probably yours as well. When's the last time you checked it? You bought one of these, you threw it in your toolbox, and it's been in there now sitting at 40%. So it comes with a responsibility. So I don't like things like that. They're a little bit fiddly, but the convenience makes it worthwhile. Next off, we're gonna have a couple of fusees or flares. You can get these at any automotive store. I prefer these over the little flashing electric lights because they're dual purpose. You will get a fire started with this uh, in any environment. They're excellent. They burn a long time. You can throw them down the road. They're universally understood. They don't take up much space and they're just always gonna work. They're just analog uh, and very simple. Also, it's gonna be a good idea to have a good field knife. This Glock knife, I love this. It's inexpensive, it's super durable, and it gives you a lot of different options. I mean, if you need to disable a vehicle, you know, a couple hits in a sidewall, that vehicle's not going anywhere. The tip is very strong. You can puncture a glass window in a car. Tempered glass windows are almost impossible to break without a hard point, and this will do it. If you need to disable a vehicle very quickly, pop the glass, throw one of these in there, and I assure you no one will be driving that car within five minutes. But a good field knife is a handy thing to have. Prying, self-defense, lots of different options for it. Also an entrenching tool. If you live in an area where there's a lot of snow, it's a good idea to have a snow shovel, something that you would see on, on an avalanche pack. You can get by with one of these. This is a Glock shovel. Um, there's lots of different varieties of these. These are good options. You can chop with them, you can dig. Uh, if you get yourself in a situation where you get stuck, you'd be very glad to have this. You can also break glass and break windows with these. It's a pretty, also a pretty good defensive weapon and very, very versatile. So kind of a, a military style entrenching shovel. Have one of these and you get what you pay for. Amorex are the best. I would not scrimp on it. Amrex, you can count on, they're all metal, they're, they're higher quality, USA made, a lot better than some of the Chinese options that you're gonna get. This will not come, not, not go off in your car, uh, near, or near, nowhere near as likely as some of those cheap ones with the plastic heads. My <clears throat> favorite first aid kit, the one that I keep in my truck, is a headrest kit. Now this is made by our friends over at Refuge Medical, and it's very well designed. This fits on the headrest. You can just clamp it right on there, just wrap it around. It's universal, it'll fit anything. It's got a nice heavy Velcro on the back and it's very identifiable. If you send someone, hey, go into the truck and get the first aid kit, they're not gonna be digging and looking around. You know, seconds are important. I used to be a medic at a fire department. I ran a lot of calls and that first 10 minutes is very important. And if you waste two or three of them digging around looking for a first aid kit, you know, you might not ever get those back. So having it up on the front where everybody can see it, you can tear it away, you're gonna have everything you're gonna need. Tourniquet, blood stoppage, this is a great, great kit. Highly recommended, very, very happy with that. 
If you live in an area where you have uh, wind storms like we do in the Pacific Northwest where there's trees and branches that are always coming down across the road, having a good saw and don't scrimp on the size, man. You don't want to have to try to cut through a 12 inch branch or a 12 inch tree with a six inch blade. Have something serious. You know, if you can get a big one, like a good silky, uh, just buy something appropriate to, to the area, vegetation in your area. You know, you can get through a log, a pretty good sized tree. I could cut through a two, three foot tree with this. It's going to take me a few hours and some help with some friends, but I could get through it. And if you get a big log across the road or a tree across the road, if you can't move it, how are you going to get through it? You need to have a good saw, especially if you live up in the forest. Have a nice scraper. I really like if you have a big truck, and it's hard to reach the window on those things. They're getting so tall these days. So go buy a truck stop and get one of these. The big, the, the long haul guys use them and they extend and you can get your ice cleaned off, get your window cleaned off. And these are awfully handy to have. I probably use this once a week or so. Toolkit. I cover this in detail, the 10 items that you should have. It's attainable, it's not pie in the sky, it's very easy. I'll put a link down in the subject heading. When you're done with this, you can go watch it and it has have all the content. You're probably already gonna have most of the things in here, but my granddad's 50 years of experience as a mechanic kind of built this kit uh, and it's pretty comprehensive and, and not difficult to put together. Keep it in a tool roll, that way anything loose in the cab is gonna be less likely to, to injure you. Have some high protein snacks, nuts, uh, berries, anything, there's a lot of power bars, anything that's not gonna spoil, it's pretty inexpensive. You'll use this all the time. You always have kids or someone that's hungry, I'd be able to reach in the back and grab this. Uh, it's very, very important. Make sure you put it in a sort type of container if you have rodents or animals that tend to get in your car where they won't chew through it because this will draw them uh, if it gets opened and that could be a problem. So just act accordingly. But high protein snacks, jumper cables, man. I know this is old school, but granddad swore by this. You gotta have jumper cables. Those little jump packs are just not reliable. And in the cold environments in the winter time, battery problems next to tire problems are usually the number one issue. When you're buying jumper cables, be discerning. They're not all created equal. What you're looking for is no less than 20 feet long. Why? Well, if you get a car that's nosed into a parking lot and you've got to run them all the way to the back to get a jump, if they're only 16, 12 feet long, it's not happening. You're just not going to be able to do it. But a 20 foot set of, set of cables are usually enough for most applications where you can get it all the way to the back and nose a car bumper to bumper and get it going. Don't get anything less than number four wire. Number four wire is about the minimum especially if you're gonna be starting anything with a diesel pickup. But these are big, heavy duty, high quality record cables. They're gonna be expensive, but this is an investment worth having. This, this is something that, that most guys are not gonna have. Everyone's relying upon those jump packs, but once those are do done, they're done. This is, this is reliable right there. 20 foot number four, wool blanket. Probably the most used thing in my truck is having a wool blanket. Wool is, the, is a great insulator because it's not affected so much by moisture. If you have to get out and go for a walk or if you get wet or come across, across the scene, I've come across accidents where people were outside freezing. Just getting a blanket on someone can really treat shock well and you'll just use it all the time, especially if you have kids. There's always someone cold or whatever, but just a good wool blanket, get an old army blanket, whatever you can find. Wool insulates while it's wet and you will use it all the time. Just throw that on the back. You'll use it for a million things. You can cover things up, make it a little bit more secure if you need to leave a bag or a purse in your car. Uh, but a wool blanket in your rig is, uh, well, that's an essential for me. And I'll wrap up with, with this. I keep a spare set of clothing. Well, I keep five pieces. What I keep is a set of rain gear. Now, this kit's not including retrieval stuff or chain stuff. That's a whole different kit. If you have a winch, you know, that, I'll do that separately. But a good set of rain gear. If you haven't bought rain gear already, I'd recommend you buy something that's got a good camouflage pattern for various reasons. You know, this could come in really handy. If you don't have camouflage, it's nice to have a little bit for, from time to time. But good quality rain gear, something with a hood on it. Make, get it a little bit big so you can put clothing underneath of it. And if you need to get out and do tire chains or get underneath the vehicle to work on something or you just need to walk home, 
How nice would this be if it was cold and rainy out? Uh, rain gear, sometimes you forget a coat, you don't judge the weather right. Having this in the back, I grab this all the time. I've, uh, I've used it many, many times. In addition to the rain gear, a pair of extra long underwear. This is Merino wool. Icebreaker is probably my favorite bland, uh, brand. It lasts a long time. Smart wool is also good. You'll use this if you just dress wrong or you get up in the mountains or you get stuck and you're just cold or you get wet. You know, you could basically take off all your clothes because if you get wet, if you're wearing cotton, you're never going to get that dried out and you'll just be freezing all day. You can strip all that off. You can put this wool on, put that rain gear on, and that'll serve you pretty well. It's a pretty warm setup because rain gear doesn't breathe and it traps a lot of the heat inside and you'd be happy to have it. Just for lots of different reasons. It doesn't take up much space, throw it in the back, have tops and bottoms, a base layer, and mix with that rain gear, that's a good combination. A pair of leather gloves, obviously. If you live in cold climate, get lined. Uh, if you're not so lined, just single leather's fine. Uh, but leather gloves, doing your tire chains, uh, keeping warm, we don't need to talk about it, a million things. And an extra pair of socks, same thing. You can get by with wet shoes if you can get that wet clothing off, Get those wet socks off, get some dry socks on, a good base layer on, uh, it'll save your life, especially if you get stranded out in any spot where, where you tend to get wet. And I guess that's it. That's my kit. One last thing I forgot. Canteens. Stainless steel, wide mouth. Wide mouth so you could melt snow in it. You can put, pack these things with snow. You can throw them up on the engine manifold. They'll melt quite quickly. You can't do that with plastic. Also, you could boil these. You could start a fire, stack up some rocks, put these in there, take the tops off, obviously, but you can boil and purify water with that. So about a quart per person. If you live in a hot climate, it's gonna be about a gallon per person. But if, you, but if it's cold, don't store these with water because they'll split, they'll freeze and split. So just kind of a deal, deal you have to, something you have to deal with in the winter time. Having water around here is never a problem. It's abundant and it's basically everywhere, but have canteens, at least you can have something to store and carry and boil with and cook with in a pinch. And stainless steel is the best. I'll do one more video uh, for those of you who are into retrieval, retrieval st straps, shackles, snatch block, winch winching type of things, uh, tire chains, I might lump that in there together uh, and that will basically round it up. So for me, basically the truck, truck gear falls into three categories. The tool kit, number one, the survival kit, which I just shared with you today, and then the tire chains and retrieval kit is number three. And that basically rounds up what I keep uh, in my pickup. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you all on the next video.